All right. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon for everybody, and if unless it's good morning to some of you, I want to thank you again for tuning in. It's a it's such an honor to be uh, able to share some information with you, and I really enjoy doing these webinars. And I want to personally thank all the different people that have written to me with and sent pictures with some of the painting effects that we talked about on our last webinar. A lot of people have been sending me examples to look at, and they're really on the right direction. Their creativity is jumping here and that's exactly what we wanted it's just to start pushing those buttons and see where they where what avenues they can lead us down uh, today we're going to do some a little more elaborate Photoshop stuff and I'm gonna get sort of let you get inside my head on how I do my compositing images let me just throw some images up here while we're talking um, and I'm on the bridge here so I think if I do uh, uh, yeah, just good. Okay, so as um, what I like to just talk about is I like to sort of cut my pictures apart, even if it's starting out as one photograph. I like I'll take my photographs, I'll cut them apart, and sort of reassemble them. Uh, I come from a multi-image background long before computers, literally two decades before the computers got, or at least fifteen, good fifteen years before the computer really got a hold of how we do photography I started working in the darkroom with 8x10 sheet film with multiple enlargers and pin register masking and codeless and that's how we ended up putting these images together and we had ways to do it but it was pretty much cutting something in using a, a mask that we cut out of film making sure that the images go down in a perfect registration each time and when the computer opened up uh, the layers and the way we can assemble images it changed absolutely everything it's just the tools we still assemble with the same artistic know-how but we have much much better registration and ways we can seam images together uh, I, I really enjoy being able to take these images from the original captures in Adobe Camera Raw get those tones right and, and literally it could be mixing several exposures together a merged HDR or it could be more of an artistic composite like we're showing some of these here I, I tend to give myself a self assignment everywhere I go I try to shoot some elements that would then turn into a montage for me so you need to give yourself that extra cool self assignment you're visiting someplace new take that camera shoot lots of elements and let's see what you can guys can come up with when you start merging these things together with type and edges and frames and effects that we can do in the on one software uh, these ones we're looking here where I shot these down in South Beach Miami they're just two shots put together or sometimes two or three shots put together but it's it's how you put them together using blend modes using layer masks and I'm gonna really let you give you today I'd like to give you what I call a creative starting block so that when you don't really feel that creative but you know you want to create something where do you get started where do the ideas come from let me show you a great way to get these started and it sort of sort of self motivates you to finish up these kinds of shots somewhere along the way even if we probably don't fi finish today on my encore one I want to do some what I call uh, display excuse me displacement mapping this is the, the image we have on the screen right now with the uh, circuit board head is an example of that where I've taken a circuit board head and I've overlaid it on top of a uh, mannequin head but the circuit board head has not only melded itself texture wise and lighting wise but the lines of that head now flow and bend as you see in the curves of the head or the nose you see these lines actually bend around the head so that's some really cool things that we can do with that um, so we may or may not have time today but we'll probably get that on the encore so the encore we're going to do in two weeks will definitely be some different uh, stuff so we're not going to do the exact same pictures again we're going to start with this photograph right here we're going to hopefully end up with something that looks pretty close to this this is my Austria montage and I've done this many a time uh, in lectures and stuff so I'm going to give you sort of run through this and show you exactly how we can do that so first I want to do is let me get the images and I'm going to work on open in the bridge and we'll just go ahead and move this, get this closed off here, stay nice and clean. Now these are images that when I was speaking in Austria, I ended up taking a bunch of these you know, images and I've sort of narrowed down a couple of textures, a couple of rock walls, a couple statues, and somehow we're going to take just maybe two or three of these images and show you how we start getting our montage ready. Now, first rule, don't start out with a blank template, like just like 
nothing, a white or black or checkerboard, put an image down and you call that the anchor image. I don't care if by the time you're done with it that you can't even see it anymore. It's just good to have an anchor image at the bottom of the stack so that you don't ever get any holes and stuff inside your montages. So as looking across these things, I decided that I like this image right here and we're going to open up this what I call Austria 6. We're going to make this one as our our sort of our anchor image that we're going to bring other things on. So the first thing I'll do is let's open up uh, this nice little statue here and we are going to use the move tool now I could cut a piece of it out but I don't need to do that I'd rather work with the entire image and mask out the part the one thing that we're never going to use is going to be the eraser tool the eraser tool from this day on is an illegal tool there's no nothing in Photoshop that requires me to use an eraser tool an eraser tool means the pixels are gone and when I save the file that's it my style of montaging is called way of the fast retreat it means I want to be able to undo and change my mind because what looks good today and what looks good at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're doing it doesn't always look so great when you wake up the next day. Or, more importantly, if you're doing it for a client, you, ha you want to be able to have your retreat all set so when the client says, you know what, I think I want that bigger, smaller, and brighter, darker, you can have the most options to finish that up. So I'm going to take my move tool, key letter V, and I'm just going to drag this little head over here into that shot. We'll close that off. And I'm going to hit my F key to go to full screen. And I'm going to stay in my move tool. And I'm going to position this over here on the left side of the shot. Now, if I need to size it a little bit at this point, I could make this into a, a smart object. If I'm not sure about how I want things done, I will do smart objects. If I find that I'm doing more artistic stuff and it's not really that critical and I'm not going to be going big, small, big, small, big, small over and over again. I'm not going to be using the smart objects today. I'm just going to really work, concentrate on layers and masking and not worry about the objects because I, I there's some restrictions with smart objects such as cloning and things that I don't really like and I want to have the freedom to do everything I can with a layer. So I'm going to open up, let's get our layers panel out of Photoshop, out of the uh, stack here and we'll keep this kind of ready to go with us here so we can constantly look at that. You can see we have our background layer and we have our first layer in here. Now, when I click on a uh, the new layer mask icon at the bottom of the, uh, the layers panel, you will be able to see right here a white layer mask. When we think of masking, we're going to think of black conceals, white reveals. But I don't want a white mask. What I've done here is, in a sense, first thing I really want to do is actually position it. So I'm going to do a Command T or a Control T, my free transform, Control T on the PC, and I've got my transform box here. And I'm now going to just bring up this head a little, I don't think I want it quite that big. So let's bring this down. I'm, going to, I'm using my Shift key to constrain proportions. And I'm just sort of bringing that head in there. I know we don't have anything up to that point. I'm thinking that's probably a better size. I'll hit return. So we've got this guy resized. And I'm, I'm fairly confident that that's going to work. So I don't want to add a white layer mask. The reason why is I, now that I'm in position, I don't want to paint out the 75% of the photograph that still remains. I want to paint in the 25 or 35% that I really need. So I'm going to Command Z that, Control Z on the PC, take care of, take, take that out, and we're going to hold down the Option key or on the PC the Alt key and click New Layer Mask. Now when we do that, what are we doing? We're adding a, watch what happens, adding in one click, New Layer Mask, Fill with Black. So now we know that that image is, is concealed. So I can actually paint in the image exactly where I want that. Now, always got to be careful that, I'm going to kind of just zoom in for a second. You can see here that we have a box around the, uh, the actual mask. If we click on the layer, there's a box around the layer. Make sure that we're on the mask. When it's very hard to see that. You have lots of layers. You keep jumping back and forth. If something doesn't paint, that's the first place to look. Am I on the mask or am I actually painting right on the photograph? Okay. So be aware of that. We're going to be on the mask. We can blow this up a little bigger now so we can see. And I'm going to make sure that I'm there. I'm going to pick a paintbrush. Now, paintbrush, I'm going to look at my, my brush sort of settings here. And I want it to be like this. What I don't want is things like where, where it's smaller or where, where it starts out as a small piece, a small brush, and gets larger. I want it to be a full solid soft brush because I'm going to use 
opacity and, and flow to control what comes out of my Wacom pen. So what I normally do is I have a full opacity and a very, very low flow, which means the longer I hold this down, the more ink will come out of my pen. Think of it as an airbrush that's ready to spray ink on this canvas, but I want it to come out very restricted and very slow. So the flow controls that. So my, my size of my brush, I got a soft brush that's going to that's gonna control the overall uh, you know how the how the ink in a sense the pixels are laid down. So let's close that off or set, and I know that I'm on white, I'm on full opacity, and I'm on like eight, ten per here, ten, seven percent on the uh, flow. So as I paint in here, I'm going to just do it kind of slowly. You can see how I'm bringing it in slowly. There's no reason why you have to come in so fast. I'm going to bring it a little higher than. I'm going to bring it up to about 15 or 16 percent, so it comes out a little better. And here it is. I'm bringing this guy in. I'm just brushing it in. If I go too far, oh, just go over here and change it from black to white. I'll make my brush a little smaller. I'm using the left and right bracket keys. Left and right bracket will make my keys bigger and smaller. I can also use uh, my control and my option or control alt, and I, I can actually just drag and make them harder, softer, bigger, smaller right here on the screen as well. So as I'm coming back in, I'm, I'm actually removing some of that again back and forth. So I just wanted to show you that we can go back and forth, and you're not locked in. Now, of course, with an eraser tool, you erase it, it's gone. You'd have to bring that guy in again. So let's stay away from the eraser tool. Instead, we have a mask. Now, we'll look at this. What do we have? Oh, see, I can see if I turn off that bottom, area, bottom image, what do I got? Got some leftover stuff that I don't want. So I'll click my brush. I'm on black to conceal it. And let me just erase that back off a little bit so I can see a little better if I need to to find out where things are happening. I'll reverse it again, maybe come back out here, put a little more of a forehead and a little more of that hair in there. Now I can actually go through now, once I have something in position, I can go through the different blend modes to see how I want that thing to actually work within the environment. In the dark room, we never had that. The dark room, we just had sort of shape. An exposure. It could be more or less of an exposure. The shape could be soft or hard. But here we can interact with the layers below because of the layer blend modes. We have normal all the way through all these different modes here, and each of these are saying I'm going to interact with the pixels below. Show if I'm lighter than or darker than or or multiplied together or I'm going to use the hue and let the luminance and uh, color or luminance and saturation come through but use the hue of the new image or the saturation of the image or the luminosity. If I use the luminosity image, what's going to happen? An image is going to turn very blue. You can see that because I'm using the color blue and I'm putting on, in a sense, a black and white photograph. Now, when I'm in this kind of creative mode, yes, I know what a lot of them do and I know what I'm looking for, but I want to experiment as much as possible and go through all the blend modes because we have what we call in montaging the very happy accident. You just didn't realize these two things were going to come together like this until you saw it. So what I'll do here is I'm in my move tool. I'm going to use my shift key and my plus and minus. And what that's going to do, it's going to, if I just hold it down and don't let go, you can see how it's literally changing up here you can see the names just flashing by it's changing what the actual blend mode is so in this case is not a lot of blend modes are going to work with us light and one of my favorite ones a lot in montaging is going to be overlay and soft light but in this case it's not working very well you also have a normal blend mode and then use the opacity as I slide down I can have more or less of that layer coming in but you notice we didn't use any erasers if I hold down my shift key and click the new layer mask icon, I get an X right through the mask, and that sort of disconnects temporarily the actual layer mask. Why is that good? Sometimes you might want to come in here and say, oh, I, I didn't realize, oh, by the way, I didn't like that little spot on the nose right there. Not that it really makes any difference in real life, but let's say I went in here and had to go back in here and actually get on that layer and uh, retouch that little spot right there. Okay, I'm now going to go back, shift click again, bring back my mask, make sure I'm okay, and I'm set there. So we have our first element in the photograph. Let's go back and let's look at another element now. Let's see. I think what we're going to do is take this element right here. This is the uh, actual chateau where we actually did our conference in Austria, right below the Alps here. We did our lecturing here. Very cool place to go. And uh, we're going to end up bringing this in as an element. So. I'm thinking we're going to use a couple of pieces of this one. I'm going to use this piece right here. So I'm going to go to my marquee tool. I'm going to go to a 
a square marquee or uh, and I'm going a rectangular marquee and I'm going to just grab a nice section of this helm here not the black area a little bit of the Alps and I'm going to bring that in with my move tool drag that over and see where that's going to go okay let's go ahead and we'll move this out of our way for a second because you might want to use another piece of that one so let's go and see how this fits in now as I'm looking through here the first thing is I gotta figure out where it's gonna fit so I'm going to hit the 5 key now if I hit the 5 key you notice I hit 50 percent if you hit the 3 key you're at 30 percent if you hit the 8 key you're at 80 percent so I can change my opacity if you hit the say 6 6 twice you get 66 percent I, uh, from what I understand, if you hit 666, it reformats your hard drive. So you don't ever want to do that one. So we try not to. We, we don't want to do that. Okay. So we're going to go back here. and Let's leave it at zero. I'm going to go ahead and just move that around a little bit. I think it's going to go in that spot. Let's play with the blend mode. So I'm in the move tool. Shift plus. I Yes, I could do this. I could just go down each one manually. That's what I'm doing here. But instead of that, I'm going to use the shift and plus and go through the different blend modes to see if I can find one that I like. And I'm mostly looking at how this area right here interacts with that wall. So that overlay, now I'm going to keep a piece of paper right here, and I'm going to write down O for overlay. I like overlay. That might be good, but don't stop. That's the, that's the whole key of what I want to say today is don't stop when you think you have it unless you've exhausted all your options because the best one might still be laying downstream. So let's go Shift Plus, Shift Plus. Ah, I like this hard light. Let me go back to... I'm, out of the two, I'm liking hard light a little better. So obviously intermixing with the face, but that's okay. We don't, we're not going to use it there. So I'm kind of looking at where that fits together. Kind of maybe move it right to about there. And I like the hard light. So I'm going to put the hard light on my piece of paper. I like that one the best so far. That's a little too strong. Don't, don't like these. We're back around. Exclusion, subtract. Divide, hue, saturation, luminosity, and back to normal. So out of all of those, we seem to like the hard light. Okay, so I know it's in position. I'm set to go. I've got the right pretty much. Let me play with the opacity a little bit. The opacity is less. We can always do that after the after the effect. But right now the opacity is full, and I kind of like the effect. I'm going to hold my Option key, Alt on the PC. My layer is selected. Here's my new layer mask icon at the bottom of the mat bottom of the uh, layers panel. Click that. Now I got it. Now it's gone. It's away. Let's get that brush out. I've got a I've got a white brush, nice size brush, full opacity. I'm going to take it down to about 10% flow, and let's start bringing that image in. I only have to bring it in where I want it. I just really want it up in this area right in here. I don't want to go through her the face of that statue. So that feels pretty good here. And at any point, I feel like I've gone a little too far. Hit the X button. I'm painting with black. I'm just going to slowly take it back. I want it to fall off a little bit more in the uh, more of that original cracking coming through here. So I'm happy with that. So there we go. We got our, our next layer in here. I think we need something down in here. So let's go back and look at our other photographs here. We need something down here. So these other photographs, I think we'll use this guy right here. Here we go. This is a nice big fat photograph. Another, another of these uh, beautiful, ca uh, not castles, but palaces. And this, in a sense, what is the purpose? We never even talked about this. What is the purpose of the photograph? I call this, Im this image Memories of Austria. I'm just trying to sort of give myself a self-assignment to, uh, to, to create something that really makes me understand uh, how, it makes me remember how I felt about the uh, few days that I got to spend there giving a program. So let's hold down the. Well, we don't have to hold anything now because we're not registering anything. Let's just move it over, drag it over. There's our there's our our home our uh, new layer. Let's hit the F key, get to full size. And again, we didn't really show it earlier, but if we had to go to free transform, here's where here's where we get it under edit, transform, uh, up right above it right here free transform the reason why I like free transform is all of these tools of scale rotate skew distort perspective warp or rotate flip vertical and flip horizontal are all included in this one tool so I can do any of those things whether these are just one at a time so here I can distort it and flip it around and do anything I want so I'm gonna to go to free transform and here's my boundary box so I'm going to uh, hold my, my uh, shift key down if I add the option or all key, watch what happens. It comes in from all four sides. That's actually a really nice thing for us to do that because that way if we get it centered kind of where we want it to be, 
and then we just want to bring it in smaller, it's easier than trying to say shift and then reposition it. That's two moves. I'm trying to see if we can actually do it in, mo in less moves by saying why not hold down the option and shift key and that right now I'm holding the op, the uh, excuse me, the command and shift key. You can see that we can distort it. We can flip it around. Command Z. Um, let me go ahead and just hold the shift key to bring that back up in the corner. And let's get this place. That's enough of that. I'm going to get it close to where we want it to be. And here, okay, it's in position. When I go through the blend modes, I like to keep it at 100% at first because I always know that if I see an effect I like, I can always lessen the effect or if I have to, if it's not enough, I can always dub duplicate the layer and apply the effect twice if I need a stronger version of the effect. So here we go. I'm on the layer, layer number three. I'm in my move tool. I'm going to go shift plus, shift plus. Let's get this a little bigger so we can see on the screen what we're actually getting. I'm trying to get a really nice feel. I want the, the, the rocks and stuff to kind of come through. Shift plus. These are too heavy. Don't like that. It's too light. Then we get over here to overlay, which is a really nice one. I think it's going to end up being soft light. Um, that's pretty nice too, but I'm not seeing I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing it strong enough. So that's not too good either. So I'm not real sure what I'm going to do here. So we're going to keep going. Ah, that's a little better. That's uh, hard light. So I'm going to put hard light down. I like hard light, a little stronger. So after all of those, I'm just going to go back to hard light. And now that I see that, I'm going to start using my opacity to see how well that might fit in there. And I'm thinking that about 75 or 80% right there is probably pretty good. I like the way these plant these uh, trees kind of line the road, I mean the, the, the walkway here. So let's call that where it belongs. I'm going to hold my Option key, Alt on the PC. The layer is selected. It's highlighted. It's blue. Click the new layer icon. And now we have it gone again. We're going to paint the brush. I'm not painting it. Now watch when I'm when I'm painting like this. Say oh, nothing's happening. What's wrong? Ah, I'm painting black on black. Not going to work. Got to make sure that I'm on the mask and that I am painting with white to make sure that I can bring in the image. So here I'm slowly going to bring in this image. I'm going to move up my flow just a little bit more this time so we can just do a little faster now. You kind of got the effect. So we don't have to keep repeating ourselves of what we're actually trying to do here. So I'm going to bring it in a little stronger than I need it, and then I'm going to go back and take it off a little bit on the edges. So here back to the black. And right in here, I thought it was a little too strong. So, and right here in the face, and right in here a little bit, maybe to take up some of that, let more of the original rock come through. Okay, we need another little something over here. Getting closer every time. Um, you won't even notice that we're going to use some of the same pictures in multiple places. We're going to use this part of the building here. I think we've already got that open here. We'll use this part right here. We'll just take this marquee tool and I'll draw a little selection around here and I think we're going to be done with this one so let's close that one and I'll move I'm selected I'm in the move tool I'll drag it over here I think we'll uh, get that out of our way and I think we're going to put this down in this area right in here and it needs to be a little smaller command T free transform control T in the PC hold down my shift and my option comes in from all four sides at once. Now I just want to do the shift to bring it down a little bit in here. I like that. I want to hit 50% opacity for a second so I can see through the door and where that's actually going to go. And I want it to be about here. I think it's going to go right in here, just a little bit of that. So again, same procedure, real quickly. Holding my option key down, layers highlighted, add a new black layer mask. It's already in position. and we, uh, I, I like the opacity, you know, we go through the blend modes and so forth, but I, I can see already that I liked it just sort of normal with a little bit of a weak opacity, 50%, whatever, uh, whatever, you know, procedure that you like. Let's make sure we're on the layer, we're on a paintbrush, on the, excuse me, on the mask, on the paintbrush, nothing's happening because we're on black, so we go to white, and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of that home right there, and I want to put one more thing right there in the window, and then we're going to go into photo tools and see what how we can enhance it even more. Um, one more thing, let's say I'm going to bring a piece of, I think I'm going to bring a piece of this image right here, just right here. We didn't really use this over here, and I'm going to grab that, and I'll drag that over here. We're going to put that right inside that little window there. 
I think that's where it's going to go. Close that off. And we'll close this off. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to hit 50% so I can see through it. And it needs to be a little smaller. So I'll do Command-T. Got our free transform. Hold down my Shift and Option. Um, whoops, maybe went too big. Come down and reposition. Kind of like right, I think right about there. That's good. Hit Enter. I'm going to go through the blend modes now. Let me go to 100%. I hit my zero key for 100%, and I'm now going through the blend modes. I'm kind of just looking at this one area. If I see something that, that kind of stimulates me to say that's the look I'm looking for, that's probably close. None of these are really doing it, so I think I'm going to just try. I'm just going to do overlay. No, no, no. Obviously, overlay or soft light's not going to work. Uh, we'll do screen and a lot less opacity. Let's try. Let's try 50% now, and we'll go through the uh, we'll go through the blend modes one more time. I'm thinking. You can see that it's it's definitely a, it's. I get this feedback from it. I have to do it by seeing this feedback. It's not like a planned thing. And every time I do this, I do it a little bit differently because it's more what feels right at the time. And you have so many options. I'm going to use that one, which is lighten. So with that in mind, option new layer mask. Got my paintbrush. And I'll just paint in that window right in here a little bit. And that is it. Okay, that's my fin that's what I feel good about this image. If this image is a little weak right here, I might make that a little stronger right there. And of course we would now save this as a layered file because I want to um, be able to say I can go back another day and work on it. When you're working on these kind of things, consider them a work in progress that really never ends. I've got montages I've been redoing and working on for 10 years or more and I maybe I hadn't touched them in many years and I'll go back and say, you know what, I'm going to try some new effects. I didn't have this software, I didn't have this knowledge when I first did this, so I'm going to go back and try that. I know this guy is a, is a saved layered file, but I'm going to find it much easier now for me and to go into my photo tools and other things if I just work with a flat layer. So I know the layered one is there. I can always go back to this point and start again. So I'm just going to start right here and say flatten image, get it down to one, one, uh, one layer. And let's go into, we're, we're going to do our, um, our frame at the very end, but I always like to give myself a little extra working room when I'm going to do any kind of edge. Now I can do this in the software, but it shrinks the picture down, and I've already got a small picture to start with, so I don't want to lose any pixels. So I'm just going to make my own decision here that I want to draw a crop. Watch this. When you draw a crop through here, you notice how uh, it just she whiz, it just stops, it doesn't go any farther. But if you let go, then you can start again. We talked about this, I think, on the last uh, project we did. And then you can actually pull that out again. And I'm just going to give myself that extra little kick right there. White is the background color, so I know that I've got a white, a white image. Let's take it. It's a little dull. I think we need to take it into Photo Tools next. So we're going to go down here to the bottom of my Layers panels, and I have all my Photo Tools all lined up here. And we'll start out with the uh, Photo Tools. Let's initiate that. And I like using um, a lot of the, what I call the uh, image optimized tools. I think there's some really cool ones in here. And we could spend all day, I mean hours, just playing around with all the different effects and things that we could actually work inside this software. Let me go ahead and just make this a little bigger so it's nice and clean. And I'm going to go to image optimize. And I've got all these kind of things. One of the things I like, you'll see them change as I go and I'm going to stack them here. And I can also control the opacity or how much of them. So I really have, in this particular case, I'm, I'm doing what feels right. I don't have this pre-planned, so it's not like I said I already know that I want these specific ones. I'm just going to look at ones that I like to use a lot. And one of the ones I use a lot is the daily multiple vitamins here. You can see it click in there, boom. Already it's got a very nice, if I turn that eye off, you can see how nice that image is. It doesn't just oversaturate it, but it just boosted some of those colors in there. So we're going to go down to the bottom. And I just was playing around with this earlier today with, with another image and uh, that I was working on in the office. And the one called Digital Fill Flash, I thought that was very nice. Watch this. It's a little dark in that area for me here. So I'm going to use this Digital Fill Flash. And 
boom, watch what happens. Ooh, that's exactly what I needed. I needed that extra little darker shadow kick there. So, and to open up my shadow, so you can see the difference between here. I'll take both of these off. So there's my little vitamins. There's my uh, my digital fill flash. And let me look across the bottom here. If we see something, there's a probably want to do. Uh, uh, one of the sharpenings just to bring out more crispness in here. We could try the progressive a uh, high pass. Let's try this and see what this either this or the sharpen. Let me see what I like better. And it's applying it. And I didn't see a lot of change. Uh, I can see it getting crisper. Oh yeah, a lot crisper. You know what? That's about as much as I'd want. I want that not to be over sharpened because I want I want to make put some uh, you know painterly effects in here so with that in mind let's go ahead and just at least we got these three or four things but of course there is just tons of areas that we can go through here in all these different lighting effects and tinting and adding some textures and so forth so let's apply at least these corrections or enhancements to the file and what will happen here if we get our, our uh, or you can see right here it's going to come in as its own layer so if we move in a little bit let me actually kind of zoom in a little bit here you can see the before and after very very dull and not very crisp at all and when I do the before and after with these three effects it really snaps out now this is not a big file the beauty of these sometimes montages and painterly effects is you can really work on much smaller files um, one of the next things I'd like to try here is let's take this into photo frame I love my photo frame where is that Sorry, I gotta close this off and go to uh, photo frame. And I could very easily just pick a preset or one of the gurus or one of my special settings that are already that come pre-done, but that doesn't teach you anything. So I want to show you actually how do I go about making these kinds of photographs here. Uh, so let's go ahead and next thing is um, let's just open up the software. And I'm going to just try something very basic just to show you kind of the direction I, I try to go in. And we'll go to, uh, let's see, we'll go to photographic, camera, and maybe pick one of these lighter edges. I want to cut into it with a white first. And my little trick is I put a white on top of a black on top of a white. Sometimes I do, do that several times, white on black on black on white and back and sort of, and then edge it out a little bit each time until I get sort of a layered uh, image. So the first one, I'm just going to pick this one right here as my shot. You'll see it coming in. Now I'm going to go ahead, while that's highlighted, let me adjust it and find the edges of where my edges actually are. So I cut right in. I don't want to lose too much of my photograph. So I'm coming in here. I'm going to find out where that where it just starts coming into the edge and here and we're going to come on top of this one with another with another uh, another uh, frame so let's go back and say open library and let's look down here through these cameras and see if we can just pick something else that really looks good uh, actually I want to go back to this just hit this camera one here okay antique I think there's some black ones down here that I was looking at earlier. Uh, well, we could use something like this one. Watch what happens. I'm going to put this on. It looks like the same kind of thing, right? But no, watch. I change the color of this one to black and apply. And then I'll adjust this to be a black edge that's coming right to the mix the meeting of that first frame that I put in here so I'm getting that like I said these are just I'm just experimenting as I go here I'll hit that hit uh, and now I'm gonna go back and hit another one need one more on top of that open library and next one will be a white one again on top of that one and I need something with a little stronger edge to it let's see if I can figure one that I like uh, let's go down to the instant film ones let's do something weird See if you can find something. Let's try something like this, but I'm only going to use a little piece of it, okay? Uh, and plus, I might try some blend modes just to see where this leads us. Now, this may not work, and I may decide that I don't like it after I put it on here. I probably will have to put one more edge on top of this one 
because I don't like the f in this particular one that's more of a painterly like I don't really want the the film edges but I like I like the purple stuff I like all that stuff going on there I just don't like that part of it so I think we need one more that sort of finishes this off on a, that'll be a white one and so we'll say open library let's go up here to grunge and let's see if we see anything that jumps off at me here so many good ones here. There's just absolutely endless amount of frames that you will find in here to use. Not every one is appropriate for every photograph, of course, but you'll find that uh, just something in here, if you can't find a frame in here that works on a photograph, it just doesn't exist. Um, let's see, I'm still not happy with that. Let me go to, I need one more, one more, one more, uh, one more edge here. No, that's not going to work. Let's see, film. Clear inner edge. Um, no, don't like that. Don't like that. I need. Don't like dots. Don't like that today. I think there's some in here that Dave Cross had created that were very nice. Um, this looking one that has a really choppy edge. They go through here. No, none of those are doing it for me. Not yet. Anyway, almost there. One second. Kevin Kubota will always have, this is what I was looking for, it's just a black edge here. So let's put this one on the edge. This will work here on top of it. So I'm going to let a little bit of that Polaroid stuff come through here and here, but I don't want, it doesn't really look like a Polaroid now because I cut off that part that had the, you know, the, the backing little circles and stuff on there. So there we go. So we've got a, a happy little edge. Now we can always try some blend modes in here. I can just hold this over and you can see how different blend modes will do different things. But we know, we know we're just going to keep it. You have to just try that. The blend modes are very, very different and have sort of different effects here. So let's, but the same kind of blend modes and layers that you can apply in Photoshop, you apply right here as well. So let's apply that and finish this guy off. Apply, and we have our final shot. We've only got 20 minutes. So I have to, the next one doesn't have that many parts to it. It's a different kind of montage. We only have two parts, but we're going to use some different software for that. So it's good. this obviously has four parts that it's putting together, one of four, two of four. It's bringing each of these frames in, and it's going to build me a st sort of a stack of layers here. Then I can go back in again and adjust even if I want to, as long as I keep them as a layered file and save the layers as a PSD file. I don't save layered TIFFs because layered TIFFs will get me confused. If I'm going to save layers and masks, I save it as a native PSD file. If it's When it's flattened and it's the high-res flat file, I save it as a TIFF. And when I need to send it through the internet to the client or something, or uh, it's going to be something that's just for, for uh, FPO, which means for precision only, or going to be uh, so some client approval, I will use it as a JPEG. So I can have three versions of this file and instantly know when I see the same name, PSD, TIFF, and JPEG, I know exactly which one is the one with the layers that I, and the high res and the flat versus, so I know which ones to work with here. It's almost finished here. Of course, this is a fairly lengthy process because we got all these different frames we've added. And is there any questions that have come through, Brian? I always ask that when I, we have the. Uh... I, I was going to actually bring one up with regards to, so not even technically about what you're doing, but let's say someone wants to print a composite like this. What would you recommend? You know, as far as a, you know, a canvas or paper, or is there a particular vendor? Oh, that you I'm going, I've been having a great time on canvas on the. Uh, on my Canon 6100 printer, I'm printing on the uh, canvas, and they're just gorgeous with the. And then do it on a stretcher frame. Oh, mm -hmm. I have one that I did the the the, the actual image that we did uh, on our last web, the first webinar that was on the painting stuff, the the Venice image. I have a, a a 40 by 60 up in my living room. I'm looking at right now, and it looks just. I mean, I had a party over Thanksgiving, and people came in and said. Wow! Did you buy that as a painting in in when you were over in Venice and have it shipped here? How much did it cost to get that shipped? It's so big. I said, No, I painted it myself. I mean, it looks just like a, when you blow that stuff up, it looks just like a painting. And this stuff here, a shot like this, you could take this now as a flat image and do all the same painting techniques. In fact, the one that I have in my portfolio has the extra step of making the paint layer, and then the, this would be the straight layer, and you'd have the paint layer, and you'd merge the two together. Two quick questions while this is going on. Yeah. Um, first, can you repeat the 
printer model number, and then in the top of that, what kind of canvas paper are you using? Is just um, I use what I, I mean, I'm using um, stuff that I get, from, uh, my paper I get from Red River Paper Company. I can't say exactly what the name of the paper is. Off the top of my head, I wasn't really ready for that. Uh, but it's, I, I get all my, I do all my paper from Red River Paper Company uh, because I, they make the same kind of paper as everybody else, but number one, it comes in better sizes. So it's not 13. You can yeah, you get 13 by 19, but you can actually get 11 by 14 and 8 by 10 and 5 by 7, which fits better in frames when you're doing projects for clients. And I use uh, for mostly I use a premium uh, with, with its type of a premium luster, but it's called Red River Ultra Satin. Uh, my printer is the Canon IPF 6100. Uh, my uh, newest one is the 24-inch IPF 6100, and then I also keep a smaller version of that, the uh, 9500 Mark II Canon printer. Uh, I'm really liking the, the results, but, of course, it is custom profiled, and uh, it's, have. I have a custom profiled, and it, that makes all the difference in the world. You, any printer you buy, you actually have to go in and custom profile every paper, and like so, the canvas, the paper, every single one, and every single printer has its own individual custom profile. Uh, I use the X-Rite uh, spectrophotometer to create my custom profiles. And when I make a print, it's first time every time. You don't make any second prints. It's dead on the money. There's no experimenting. It's what I see as my screen. Apply the profile for the printer and paper. Comes out perfect on the other end, and I, I love that. It saves a lot of money. The one the one I use in my portfolio and stuff, and you can see this on my website has the frame and stuff on it. So, let me move ahead onto another image because we've got just a few. I, this one I think I can do in about ten minutes here. Um, yeah, that's this not is a another. So I go ahead. No, I said that's not a problem. And while you're doing that, also, if you can just uh, comment again why you prefer using a layered Photoshop file versus a TIFF file versus a JPEG. Okay, this is this is the problem. If we're asked the question is why why because TIFF because you can save a layered TIFF file. Well, when you get to where you have four or five hundred thousand files and you're archiving and you have the JPEGs and the TIFFs and the raw and the layered versions and the mass versions and the, this and that, you don't want to have to kind of go back and open it up to figure out which one was which. I automatically know just by looking at the extension of the file. I have accidentally sent a client, or not accidentally, but actually a client requested or, or sent a layered TIFF file or a layered file to a client, and then they started playing with layers, thinking they were doing something great, and then so now I'm going to put it back the way it was, and then it went to press wrong with, with the layer turned off that should have been on, and they just because somebody was messing with it. So I don't allow clients to have my layered files ever. So if you want something changed, tell me and I'll change it. So when I see TIFF, I know it's a flat, high-res graphic arts file, universal to anybody's printer, to anybody's software. I see JPEG, it's usually a smaller version, or at least compressed, so it will go over the internet and transfer. As soon as I see PSD, I know it's got layers and masks. So that's my simple way of knowing it. PSD layers, TIFF is flat, JPEG is internet. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go and I'm just going to open up two quick files here just to go through some interesting things with photo I want to do something in the uh, in uh, <laughs> focal point here this is an image that I had shot many many years ago I've done it's been through some incarnations it was actually a cover for an Atlanta magazine about a doctor who had, had killed a baby and then later on it was a cover for Photoshop user magazine in a different format and I've used this a bunch of ways just to really help explain layers and how things work together uh, I've already done some clipping paths, just some basic paths. This guy here has a path around the model's body, and over here I've got a path around it so you don't have to stay and make that done. It's not about the edges in this case. I just have to isolate those things and you don't have to wait and watch me do it now. Um, I'm going to hold down my command key and click or control key in the PC and click the the path which turns that into a selection. Whenever I make a ever have any kind of selection, I'm going to be in my move one of my selection tools, I always go to refine edge and minimally give at least 0.3 of a tenth of a pixel. Uh, that's that's usually my number for the most part. Point sorry, point 0.3, what I'm saying is 3 tenths of a feather to four or five tenths of a feather on a bigger shot will give me a natural alias edge so I can see that it has a nice feel cut out to it. I'm going to hit OK. So I know, and I'm not worried about the hair because the area where I'm going to put the wings won't interfere with the hair, so I didn't have to worry about that area. I just needed to lift this off. So here's my, here's my layers, uh, my layer panel. I'm going to do a Command J or on the PC Control J. I've already got a feathered edge, so I'm going to, boom, 
bring this guy out, and now this guy's on the model is on her own little layer. Now this over here, I do again have a path. Uh, a path. You can see that around there. If I hold my command key down, click the path. I got a selection. This time, I want the edges to be a little softer. So I'm actually going to say when I say refine edge, I might actually go up to about about a full pixel because I want the feathered. I'm just sorry, I just threw my Wacom pen across the room. One second. <laughs> All right, back here. Um, I want to be able to uh, have a very, very soft, soft edge. So I hit OK. So we know this guy is set. Let's take our wing, our move tool, and just drag our wings over here. And you see they're in front of her model. We can close this off. We don't need this anymore. So we'll bring this over here. And let's get our layers on. Here's our background layer. Obviously, the wings need to go down behind here. So I'm putting this, I want to see exactly where that might want to go. And I'm not sure, is that big enough? If I wanted to, Command T, Free Transform, Shift, and Option, this is where pulling from all four sides really helps because I've got it in position and I'm not doing this, like make it larger, oh, that doesn't fit, oh, excuse me, make it smaller, reposition it, no, that doesn't fit either. I want to be able to see, I've got it centered, so Shift and Option, and I can see just about how much I want to bring that through. And that's pretty cool right there. So I hit that, all right? Hit that. Now I need to find out a blend mode that might work. I have no idea which one I use because I've done this so many times. It's whatever feels good at the moment. And I go through all these different blend modes. I'm just doing the shift plus is I'm going through all the different blend modes here. That's a kind of cool one, overlay. Soft light is too weak. Hard light I don't like. Um, I'm thinking it might look like, after I went through all that, I think I liked originally was like was was the overlay but done twice. So if you don't if you like the effect but it's not enough, hey, why not do it twice? I dragged it down here. I've got a little bit of a stronger stronger feel. Uh, I even maybe even add one and do a uh, soft light on top of that. You know, so you can really play around and mix change opacities, whatever. But I, this is the feel of the overall shot. Now um, we're going to merge all this into one layer. Uh, because I'm going to expand my canvas, flip it around, and then we're going to do some things with the focal point. Let's do this. With all the layers sort of visible here, we're going to go, and I like to just select them, and I'll just grab them all. So I've, I've sort of hold my shift key down, and I've selected all the layers. I'm going to go to uh, new group from layers. So what that's going to do is put all that stuff into one nice little group so it's nice and clean, clean on my set here. Let's make our canvas just a little bit bigger. I'm going to make sure that white is my background color. Here's my canvas tool, my crop tool. I drag it through, and I'm going to give myself a little bit more working room up here because what I'm going to do is now that I know these are layered and put away, why not just get a nice, clean, working layer so we, we don't need it in several pieces anymore. I'm happy with the way that looks. So let's do this. Command, Option, Shift, E, or Control, Alt, Shift, E creates a blank layer and paste all visible layers into that layer. So literally, now I've got this just as one layer. So that Macintosh version is Command, Option, Shift, E. And the PC version, Control, Alt, Shift, E, is create blank layer and fill in all visible layers. So if anything was turned off, it wouldn't be included. But anything that's visible will now be brought into one layer. So let's take this guy here. We'll close this off. We don't need this. And we'll take this one and we'll duplicate it. So we have two. And let's flip this one. Command T, and I'm just going to hold my shift key down and just flip that around. By holding my shift key down, it constrains it to straight, you know, so it's per right, right there, it's perfectly 90 degrees. Holding my shift key down, I'm going to make it, it keeps it straight, and we'll move that up to where I feel like it's uh, going to merge. And I can't see through it. I'll tell you the problem here is I need to now make this one about 50% so I can see where the edge is. I want to bring her hands down so they kind of touch each other. There we go. Just like that. So now I have a transitional edge here. Obviously I've got to make a new layer mask. In this case it's a white layer mask. I want to keep this at 100% and I want to remove this. So instead of using a brush, I'm going to use one of the largest brushes we have. It's the, the gradient tool. It's actually a br really an extensive brush. I pick gradient. I'm going to pick um, light to dark here and we want to be 100% and it's going to be linear and uh, I'll probably get it backwards but I'll give it a shot here. I always do this backwards and I'm going to draw a short little line 
and of course it's backwards. So I'm going to draw a short little line the other way. There we go. Now we can get a little bigger and we can see what we have. I have drew, drew a little line here. We can hold down my shift key and take out that mask for a second. It's cleanly giving me a nice transition to that image right there. Okay, now last little cool effect before we do the focusing thing is let's just say we save it as a layered file and we put that away. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this down into one layer to make things a little easier for me. So let's say the layered file is saved. Put that away. We're down into one nice little layer here. This is a very cool little effect. When I don't know what else to do with a photograph and it's just a little too sharp, a little too real, I do a thing which I call the treatment. I take this layer and I duplicate it. I put it on top and I change the blend mode to darken only. Then I go to, with that highlighted, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you're going to see a very cool effect. So with no blur, and if I start adding a blur, now of course this is, you can see how from this picture here, it's blurring the image, but if you look at the picture here because of the darkened blend mode, it makes it into a very illustrative look to it. Now that's a little too much. I'm not looking for something too wacky, but I'm looking for something that has this sort of ethereal glow to it, something like that. That's cool too. I like that. You know what would be really cool here is one of those little line drawings that we do. So why don't we try something one more time? Command Option Shift E. I have a brand new layer with everything on it. Um, let's change this to Color Dodge. And Color Dodge. Um, and it's the opposite. I, I inverted the image. And now I'm going to draw, I'm going to move my move tool and drop it down one click and one click over, so I can actually have a little bit of a um, a little bit of a sort of a line drawing here. And I think what we'll do is create a new layer based on that. Command Option Shift E. Here's a new layer up there. We'll turn this one off, get rid of it completely. So we have this, which is going to be our our uh, cool little uh, extra little line drawing. We'll change this to dark and only. Actually, we need before we even do that, we probably should just get a little more contrast in it. So we'll do a levels on it. Let's just go to levels and get a little bit of a kind of a look to it. I'm not sure this is going to work, but I wanted to see if that was anything I wanted to add to it. Let's try multiply. Oh, yeah, there we go. So what it did here, I like what it did. It messed up the face a little bit, but I like what it did to the actual um, feathers. So you know what? If you don't like it on the face, click that. This remove just a little bit of the uh, with a we're on a white layer mask. We go to black and just remove it from the face a little bit. And maybe those arms. I don't particularly like it because it's got that double edge on the arms. But uh, but I do like what's going on on the on the on the actual feathers. It's got that extra little kick to it. So with that in mind, let's do a let's flatten all that together and take it into one of the on one plugins here. We'll say flatten image. We've saved it as layers, of course. Now we'll go down to on one. Let's see if we can make this cool. And we will open on one and let's go into my favorite little uh, focal point. I love this because now I can shoot everything sharp and always have the selective focus option after the fact instead of committing to something with a, with a soft focus lens. So we'll open focal point. Here's our shot and I'm just going to stretch out the focus point here to want to keep her hand sharp and I'm letting that bottom and also I think I'm going to let that top of the shot go way out of focus. I want I don't need to have that much sharpness. Right here I'm keeping my sharpness and letting all of that go out. This is my focus bug so I can apply my direction of the area I want to keep sharp. I can feather it. I want a faster or, or, or a smoother transition of the fall off. How blurry do I really want to get it? If I go too blurry, it's not that's not going to look good. So right about in the middle and um, You've got all kinds of controls in here that you've got to play around with and work with here. You can really change the specular highlights, and if you have sparkling buildings, there's a lot of cool things we can do there. I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way that looked right there, so let us do, uh, we'll go out of this one and go, I know we're running out of time, but I want to do this real quick, um, photo frame, and you can see all these different presets in here. Um, we're going to try. We're going to try because last time it didn't work for us. I think that's my computer had a problem because we I had done it earlier right before it went on. So it's just my computer. Let me open up the frame and we'll pick one of the presets that come with uh, with the software. And over here where it says come into place here, and I'll go to presets, 
And down here, I believe I have one with my name on it, Jim DiVitale. And actually, there's probably one that was actually used on that one. So let's use that. Here's a version that was done many years ago when I was designing these actual edges. And that's fine.